I'm Sam with jbugs.com. We're in the middle of mocking up the top end on our 1800cc engine for our 1971 Super Beetle. In our last video, we had just got done setting a cylinder head in place. We're mocking up the top end in preparation for our 1.4 to 1 ratio rockers. Ratio rockers are an easy way to wake up a VW engine and highly recommended if you have added dual carburetors and a header to a stock motor. The stock cam is one of the limiting factors in getting the fuel and air into and out of the engine. 1.4 to 1 ratio rockers increase the amount of lift from the stock camshaft from about 320 thousandths to about 420 thousandths. That is the equivalent of installing a performance cam, and the rockers can be set up and installed in a few hours with the engine in the car. The high lift rockers require shorter than stock push rods, rocker stand shims, valve lash caps, and testing to ensure that the valve train works correctly. Adding to that, we also have a stroker crank, which requires the same process. At our engine, we first test fit the new rocker assembly and see that it doesn't fit over the stock studs. This is expected as the rockers include new rocker studs, so the stock studs are removed from the head and the new studs are threaded in their place. Next, we install hardened valve lash caps on top of the valve stems. The caps are highly recommended whenever stainless steel valves are used to spread the load between the rocker tips and the valve. High ratio rockers increase the load substantially, so consider the lash caps a must. The rocker assembly is set back into place to confirm the fit, and we can see the bosses aren't completely bottomed out on the stands. We pull the rockers off and install 15,000 rocker stand shims on the studs so the rocker assembly can sit flat against the head. Now we can work on the rocker geometry and push rod length. So a push rod measuring tool is lubed at both ends, then adjusted to the shortest length and placed through the cylinder head into the lifter bore in the case at cylinder number three and the intake valve. The engine is rotated over to top dead center for cylinder number three, and we see the push rod drop. The push rod is moved over to the exhaust valve for photographic purposes, and the rocker assembly is bolted down to the head. Next, we back the valve adjustment screws, which are located at the push rod side on the new ratio rockers, all the way out and then screw them in at about a half a turn and lock down the nut. Then the push rod length is adjusted so it sits against the rocker adjuster and tightened to zero lash at the valve as we'll be running chromoly push rods. Zero lash is where we can spin the rod but there's no play in the rocker. If using aluminum push rods, set the valve plate to six thousandths of an inch with a feeler cage. The engine is turned over by hand and stopped when the valve is pressed in as far as the rocker will go. Then. Our magnetic base from our dial indicator is removed and the post is threaded into the head at one of the intake manifold stud threads. The arms for the indicator are removed and the indicator is positioned over the exhaust valve seat perpendicularly and in line with the valve. The indicator is pressed in and set at roughly a half an inch preloading the indicator and then locked in place on the arm. We turn the engine over slowly again noting the point when the needle stops traveling in one direction and travels the opposite. This is our max lift point, and we zero our gauge at this point. Then the engine is turned over slowly again, and we count the gauge as it passes zero. It ends up turning fully four times, and it stops at 20 thousandths, giving us a max lift of 0.420 inches. Now we need to rotate the engine over to the half lift point, Half of 420 is 210, so we rotate the engine back to full lift and continue past zero twice, then to the 10 thousandths mark. The rocker geometry at this point into the travel is what we're adjusting. The end result we want is for the rocker arm ends at the valve and at the adjuster to be parallel with the head at the half lift moment. This will even the loads on the valve and the adjuster to ensure a long life for the valve train. With our current setup, the adjuster side is considerably lower than the valve, so the dial indicator is moved out of the way, the rocker assembly comes off, and we swap out the 15,000 shim for a 30,000 shim. The push rod is lengthened to adjust to the valve, and the dial indicator process is repeated, and the net result is that the adjuster has come up as a bit, but is still much lower than the valve. The whole process is repeated with a 60,000 shim, and finally with the 60 and the 30 thousand shim stacked together for a total of 90 thousandths. 
Here we get a half lift point where the adjuster and valve are level. So the dial indicator is moved aside and the rocker assembly is pulled off. The push rod is removed and brought over to our workbench so we can mark and cut our new Kumaroli push rods with a tubing cutter. The ends of cut push rods are cleaned up with a burr bit. The push rods are blown out and cleaned thoroughly. Then a pair of old lifters are used as a hammer and dolly of sorts to hold the push rod in place at the bench while hammering the opposite end into place in the push rod tube. The push rods are blown out and cleaned again. Then back at the engine, two push rods are lubed at either end and installed at the number three cylinder which is set at top dead center. The valves are adjusted and the engine is rotated over to confirm our geometry. And with that, our markup is complete. We can now pull the head, cylinders and pistons off the short block in preparation for our top end assembly. Our last two videos have been very tech heavy and whereas properly setting your engine's compression ratio should be done for every engine build, setting up rocker geometry is a specific task required when building a stroker engine or installing high ratio rockers. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for our next video where we will complete our long block assembly. In the meantime, head over to jbugs.com for all your vintage Volkswagen parts and accessories.